Yeah. Well, you've had the most amazing blessing of being together for several days. What is it, two weeks or something like that? I've had the immense blessing of being with you for three days. <laughs> I feel really full too. <laughs> I, I'm taking everything from winter camp right now. <laughs> Take it, yeah. <laughs> okay. There's a couple of things on my heart, and I'm not quite sure where I'm going to go with this, but I was just... I caught something when uh, Dr. Russ was prophesying that I think is pretty significant. So can I start with a couple of stories? By now you know I like stories. Yeah. Well, <clears throat> sorry. <laughs> In his presence is fullness of joy, people. <laughs> you know, so one time we were doing a, a winter school it wasn't two weeks, it was 61 days. 61 days that were morning, afternoon, evening. That's how we used to do. We call them the Isaiah 61 Schools of Healing and Restoration. And this particular group were a group of Presbyterian pastors. There were 80 of them for 61 days. Okay. These, were, these were men and women. By the way, all of them were from another nation, came to Canada with us. And all of them came from countries where they never saw snow. You can't imagine what it's like in Ontario at about this time of the year. Isn't that right, Pastor John? We've been in a freeze up in Canada the last few days. And so here they come off the airplane all excited because they just want to meet God in fresh and new ways. And um, so we've got 80 Presbyterian pastors. That ought to just stir you up. I was pretty stirred up. And so we were, we were, you know, going through our school. And uh, generally what it took when we were doing those kind of schools, not quite like the dwelling place, it took about 10 days just to settle people down. You know what I'm talking about? At our center at the time, there wasn't uh, easy access to internet. We made it so that you didn't have it. In other words, this is a place of total refuge and seclusion. Are you with me? And if you needed to go to Starbucks for a cup of coffee, you walked about five miles in the winter. So needless to say, they weren't going too far. However, we did have one phone they could use, and these dear pastors, they would line up in a big lineup waiting for one phone. Well, Pastor Donna, don't you know I just need to have contact with my church? I said, well, actually, it's not your church at all. Yes. They're quite fine to operate without you yes. if you've trained them properly. And uh, it was quite a challenge. And so one day, I, was, I got up and I was really stirred up by the river. I like the river. Amen. As a matter of fact, I really like the ocean better. Yes. I don't know why, but I'm stirred up about that. I caught that the other night. <laughs> well, so what happened was this. And uh, by the way, the river is right there, isn't it, Reed? Yes, it is. I, that's why you got a couple extra pounds, man. <laughs> And so, <laughs> okay, is it all right? You know, is it all right? And so this one particular day, I, I got up early in the morning, and I could just, I could hear the river. Like, I'm hearing it. And I thought, oh my gosh, God, I think God wants to do something. So I, 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 I showed up at our center, and I said to our wonderful uh, uh, person who was full-time on our, our team, he's also a pastor, and I said to him, can you get rid of all the chairs? Uh, get rid of all the chairs. We don't want we the chairs today. And so he did. And then I said to him, do you by any chance have a tarp that you could just put on the floor? Oh, he said, nope, you know, like a painting tarp. You know those kind of tarps. And so... Uh, he did, and he came in the room. Guess what color the tarp was? You all know. <laughs> and so, watch what happened. The tarp was bigger than the room. So what do you think the tarp looked like? It looked 
walked like waves. <laughs> and so I was rather stirred up, as I tend to get on occasion. <laughs> and so I met all the pastors at the door. This is 9.30 in the morning. I mean, you know, they've just been up. They had some breakfast cleaned up a little bit, and then they're meeting me. And so I meet them at the door, and I said this to the pastors. I said, good morning. Welcome to the river. They're all looking at me like, you know, they don't know what to do. They don't know what to say. And so I said, jump in. I mean, this actually happened. <laughs> and so I'm watching them, and all of them went like statues. <laughs> they didn't know what to do. They didn't know what to say. You know, these are really, really well-refined people. They're very intelligent. But sometimes God will offend your mind to win your heart. And so <laughs> the oldest one in the group I'll never forget. He's just a, this is a wonderful statesman, this great pastor. I love him dearly. He does this. The others are all watching because he's like a leader, you know. <laughs> and so he, I'm so serious. He takes off his shoes I got to do that right now, actually. Let's get rid of them because we're in for a night. Is that true? Okay. So watch what happens. He does this. I, I, I mean, do you remember? I, I just, I absolutely love this story because it's so crazy. He's stepping in like this as though somehow, you know, he's going to be swallowed up by something. <laughs> Like, it's, it's, honestly, you got to ask God to show you that DVD when you get to heaven. <laughs> and something happens. All of a sudden, it was like he caught something. And he's down on the floor, this well-refined Presbyterian minister. He's down on the floor, and he's swimming like a crazy. He's like in the <laughs> I mean, this actually happened. Guess what happened with the other 79? They all jumped in. <laughs> it was a seat. It was like watching children, because that's what we're called. How great is the love of the Father that has been lavished upon us that we should be called the children of God. Are you with me? It was a very freeing moment. And as I said last night, you can have as much freedom as you're willing to take. So there's a big river right there. And so I remember, it wasn't, it was actually, this happened in this, at the same time. Have you ever known moments? Well, I should ask Dr. Russ and Pastor Maeve this. Pastor John, Pastor Victoria. Moments when we face a challenge in ministry. Do we ever have that happen? Yeah. Pastor John raises his hand. He's just walked through some. <laughs> Of course we have those moments. Well, Alex and I were facing a moment like that. Both of us leading national ministries at the same time were facing a major challenge at the same time. Don't you know how the enemy loves to do stuff like that? Because that's the stuff that can wear you thin, you know? And uh, so we are in that place of just holding the ground. Just hold it. Just persevere through the moment. We're living in, in a season like that right now. Are we not? The challenges have been great, but they will be greater. But there is a remnant that is rising up that will totally be surrendered. It's happening right in this church. We are one of the clusters that God is using across the globe. That will increase. However, in this moment, we're holding on. Don't you love it when we can be totally real? Yes. Come on. Faith likes to be stretched. Faith likes to be pulled into a higher realm. So what happened was this. Because <laughs> I just got a blessing from Kelty. So you got to hear the story. And so... In the midst of this flow of the river, Alex gets up one morning and he says this. I've had a word from the Lord, Donna. Would you like to hear it? Like, if Dr. Ra 
I said to you, I have a word for you. Would you like to hear it? What are you going to say? Because it's a rather unusual question. <laughs> this is my husband. But what Alex says, I've had a word from the Lord. He has my attention. Because I know when he says that, God is doing something. Are you with me? And so, although I'm a slightly perplexed, I'm actually hearing. So I said, yes, of course. I want to hear it. And then he said, are you sure? <laughs> By this point, I'm not sure what's going to happen in the house. Like, I'm starting to get a little bit nervous. Wouldn't you? Because this is a very, very odd moment. And so I said to him, I think so. <laughs> I'm starting to, I'm not sure how to respond now. <laughs> and then he said, are you ready? By that point, I wanted to get up and run out of the room. <laughs> and then he said, watch what he does now. This is exactly how it happened. He said this, the word is, and he stopped. Like, I love this man, but now I want to clobber him. Like, just give it to me for heaven's sakes. <laughs> the word is, it's hanging in the air. What's that? <laughs> and this is what happened. The word is blessing. And he stopped. This is how great my faith was. After watching these 80 Presbyterian ministers soaking in the river, I'm thinking, wow, that's great faith. Until that moment. So I said to him, can we have a little bit more, please? <laughs> I, I'm, so, I'm so serious. This actually happened just exactly the way I'm telling you. And he said, I knew you weren't ready to hear it. And he was right. We can hear words so frequently that we don't hear them at all. And they're powerful. Over the next six weeks in our household, dear ones, something started to take shape. While we're running a school for these dear Presbyterian leaders who are being totally turned upside down, our house is being turned upside down. Are you with me? With one word. One word. And so Alex would walk around the house, and he's a tall guy. You know, he's just got a, a very strong presence to him. You know, that kind of a person. He's like that. He's walking around the house and he's doing this. Blessing. Blessing. Over and over and over. The guy would get up to go to the toilet in the middle of the night and I'm hearing blessing. This went on for six weeks in our house. It was like the house was starting to shake. That's what was happening. I remember one day coming home from the ministry center and he's got a big sign on the door. And it says this, Jerusalem is in our midst. I wasn't sure should I walk in the door, you know, because there was an encounter of the presence of God that was doing something through one word. And the word was blessing. Are you with me, dear ones? <laughs> I remember going into the bathroom and he's got it, he's got it written on the top of the mirror. <laughs> blessing. He had it written on the fridge door. I went into the car and he's got it written on the dash of the car. God was speaking something. God was speaking something. Six weeks later, he gets up and he says, Donna, I'm thinking, oh my gosh, another word. <laughs> Except this time.
time, he said, it's unstoppable. And I want to tell you, it took six weeks for that word to penetrate. Are you with me, dear ones? You've been soaking in the presence of Jehovah God for the last two weeks. You have seen things that are unexplainable. They're unexplainable. And they are undeniable. And they are unstoppable. Are you with me, precious ones? And it's not just to sort of get your curiosity. It's actually to see change. It took six weeks in our household for that one word to penetrate. But when it did, it changed the entire environment from that day forward to this. And he came out and he said this, I still keep it in my Bible. Out of the pure waters of the river of life. Are you hearing me? Out of the pure waters of the river of life, unstoppable blessing is flowing from the throne of God in ever increasing measure into and through your life. Amen. That everything that you touch, everything that you are connected with, everything that you are investing in carries the presence of unstoppable blessing. Yeah. And it shifted something on the inside. From that moment until this, the impact has been phenomenal. Just phenomenal. I remember taking that into the healing center. Our young adults, I had a large team of young adults at the time, and uh, we're, in a, we're away on a ministry trip in the U.S., and I'm phoning back to see how are things going at the center. Next thing I know, the very words that I've just spoken to you, these young people put it together into a song. And the song is called Unstoppable. Ultimately, it became a CD, and the CD is called Unstoppable. I feel like there's something about that that's in my spirit as we gather together here tonight. Are you with me, precious ones? Because we're in a moment... And I felt as I was sitting here when Dr. Russ was prophesying that we need to absolutely know with certainty that the favor of God is on us. I feel there's something here of the fire of God in his favor. That in the midst of the greatest challenge, the favor of God is increasing. Are you with me? Tears might come for the night, Psalm 30 verse 5. We all know that. Joy comes back in the... Well, how does the verse start? The verse starts with favor is on you for a lifetime. Everybody say, I'm taking that. I'm taking that. I'm taking that. Favor is on you for a lifetime. I personally believe that in the middle of great turmoil, as we sit here in the divine presence of heaven, in the midst of unstoppable blessing, the favor of God is resting heavy like a fire. Is it all right for me to say that? Yes. Favor is a now word. Favor does, has nothing to do with circumstances around us. Are you with me? Favor has nothing to do with what the media is trying to put into your mind. Are you with me, dear ones? When God puts favor on you, favors on you in the middle of challenge. And I feel that as we come to this time in the camp, that there's a, a fresh release of the favor that is undeniable. Amen. The favor of God is irresistible. Yes. The favor of God is contagious. Yes. The favor of God influences. Yes. Yes. The favor of God pours out of your pores. Yes. It is the heart of God. So I read out of Psalm 5, and let me get it here quickly. <clears throat> It says this in verse 12, for you, O Lord, will bless the righteous. Is there a righteous person in this room? Because we are the righteousness of? Of God. So go, Lord, you bless the righteous with favor. You will surround him as a shield. Amen. So we want to pray the shield of that favor so deeply ingra in, ingrained into you that you're walking around and the only word that comes out of your mouth is blessing. Are you with me? You can take that one home, take it to the bank, take it wherever you want. It is infectious. Are you with me? 
it, it changes situations. So as I was looking at that in, my, in our own life, we look through the scripture because I want to declare to you that time is catching up with what God has already decreed. Yes. You and I are living in a season right now where time in the natural realm is already, is already decreeing, attempting to decree what God has already declared. You got to hear this. We are truly living in a now moment. This is a revival generation. This is a revival generation. And I wrote down just recently... You know, I, um, I, I have a journal with me all the time. I'm so proud of Dr. Russ. He can take notes on his iPhone. Yes. Like, I, don't you think that's brilliant? Yeah. I, I just think it's brilliant that he can do that. I've tried, but somehow I can't catch the anointing. <laughs> the anointing comes off my pen. Yeah. <laughs> Anybody else like that? <laughs> I'm a journal person. I write everything. I get a sense of something, and the next thing you know, God's speaking a message. That's how it works. It could start from one word. Are you with me? But somehow it flows off the pen. It hasn't quite made that anointing to, for that to happen on my iPhone. You can pray for me, Dr. Russ. <laughs> so this is what I felt God put in my heart. These are not just the days of Elijah of Moses, of Abraham, of David, of Jacob. No, these are the days of a generation that will walk above the storms. I'm declaring that over your life right now in the name of Jesus. Walk above the shame. Walk above the doubt. Walk above the fear. Walk above the darkness. Walk above the narratives that are all around us. By the way, that shift from day to day. Are you with me, dear one? That will walk above the division. Did you hear that? Walk above the division. We are that generation right now. So that every person we are coming in contact with, that's what we're giving them. We're walking above this stuff. Why is that? Because we're seated in the heavenly place. Are you with me, precious ones? We will walk above the powers of darkness. We walk above the enemy. Are you with me? In other words, in our discernment, we're one step ahead of the enemy all the time. Yes. Everybody say, I'm living, I'm living that way. Why is that? It's because favor is on your life. Yes. Favor is on your life. It is a now word, and it has nothing to do with what's going on all around us. Everybody say amen. amen. You and I have this thing called wisdom. We have discernment. We, have a, we walk together and hear God together for the season that we're living in and should be living in a place where we are prosperous in the midst of the challenge. Everybody say, I'm taking that. Are you sure? Because when the challenge increases, well, it could be a challenge. Is that true? All right. I'm sharing from my heart tonight because I feel this is important. That's how I want to pray when we pray together. Are you with me? And so I'm looking at a few people in the scripture just as I'm thinking about this. I look at someone like Esther for such a time as this. Can you imagine this young woman who is Jewish? She is Jewish. Is that true? Yes. Come on now. They want to have all the Jews killed in that time as well. Yes. And here she is being prepared to be, to be a queen. Is that true? Yeah. And she wants to go and present herself after a time of intercession and waiting. If I die, I die, but I'm going. Yeah. We're living in that season right now. Yeah. Are you with me? Yeah. Do you know that I had the amazing opportunity of being with a group of young adults that are right on the edge. I need to say this carefully. They're right on the edge of a very challenging nation. I'll say it that way. Between two nations. Are you with me? <clears throat> I will tell you that it's on the other side of the world. And um, this young group, they call themselves a, a college young adults. 
but this is a most unusual college because they are being prepared to walk the most challenging road in the world through Afghanistan into the Middle East. Are you with me? Many of them know it's going to cost them their life. But they're carrying the gospel of Jesus. Why? Because they want to walk that road back to Jerusalem. Why? Because they have a heart to see the Jewish come to Jesus. Everybody say amen. amen. So if I die, I die. We're living in a season like that right now. We are in the season where we see suffering around us. Is that not true? Come on, there's endurance around us that's happening. But in the midst of that, we watch what happens with Esther because she goes before the king. I wonder if she was trembling. What do you think? This is a real person like you and like me. And what does the king say to her? You have found favor in my sight. Ask me what you will and I will grant you that request up to half of my kingdom. I wonder how Esther responded in that moment. Do you think she freaked out? Come on now, let's be real. Let's be real. What was it like? What was it like for Nehemiah when he went to his boss, shall we say, and, uh, by the way, I need a sabbatical. I need some time off because I got to go home. I got to go back to Jerusalem. You know, the, our, the walls of our city have been broken down. So I need some time off. And all of a sudden, you hear the same thing. All of a sudden, there's this announcement that you have found favor in my sight. Not only am I going to release you, I'm going to pay for the whole deal. That's called favor. It's called favor in the midst of the broken walls. Are you with me, precious ones? Come on. It's all around us right now. You and I are living in a moment that is unprecedented. We've never walked this week before. This is a new time. And when God says it's new, he means it's new. It doesn't mean because we're maybe out of one challenge with COVID, so to speak, that we fall back into old ways. No, 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 no. This is 2023. Uh, the year 5783 on the Hebrew calendar. And one of the pictures of the number three is the picture of a man moving forward. Looks like this. You all know that. Dr. Russ, I'm sure, teach, has taught on this. This is a moving forward season. Yes. This is not a time to shrink back or to look back. It's a time to move ahead in the midst of challenge. Why is that? Because the favor of God is on you. Everybody say, the favor of God is on me. What was it like for precious Ruth? Because I think, I actually believe we're living in a, in a Ruth season right now. We are living in a Ruth season. That in the middle of famine, in the middle of loss, in the middle of being a Moabite, in other words, a foreigner, are you with me? In the middle of the loss when Naomi says, I'm going home, she says to Ruth, please do not ask me not to come with you. Because I want to come with you. Why is that? Because they're glued together. And by the way, Naomi's an angry woman. What's it like to be glued to an angry person? Yeah, yeah that's a different kind of relationship. And she says, where you go, I'm going. Not just a little nice piece of poetry. You know, we like the poetry. But how about the walk? How about the walk? Why is that? is because she, she caught something as a Moabite woman, and that is, I'm staying with you, we're walking through this together, I'm glued to you. That's called Dabak. That's called relationship. That's the season we're living in right now. I'm praying in the name of the Lord Jesus that there's a real tightening of Dabak in this house as we move forward in the days ahead. Yes. So we're saying the same thing. Where you go, I'm going. Yes. Are you hearing me? Yes. What you eat, I'm eating. Where you lodge, I'm lodging. Where you are going to be buried, I'm going to be buried too. What is that? That's a heart that's speaking that comes straight out of the heart of God. And this is a foreigner showing us the way. Are you with me? So we move on in the book and you know what happens. We all love the end of it. Yeah. Ruth is happening to walk it. In poverty. In poverty. Are you with me? In other words, they're walking through a great challenge. And in the midst of it, in chapter 3, you read these words. And uh, she just happened. Just happened. 
to find herself in the field of Boaz. It just happened. We ought to be expecting those moments. It just kind of happened. Come on, just happened. She doesn't even have a clue. All she's doing is being faithful to the moment. I'm praying that for you right now in the name of Jesus. Just be faithful to the moment that God has us walking in because his favor is unstoppable. It is undeniable. It is unexplainable, but it is on you for a lifetime. Okay? In the name of Jesus. And we read these amazing words that she, you know, Boaz says, well, who is, who's, who's that woman? Can you imagine what she looked like? I think she may not have been as pretty as what you all are right now. Poverty, loss, sweat, picking up the scraps on the side of the road. But favor was on her. I need you to hear that. Favor is in this house. Favor is on your life. Favor is on that which you are praying for that you have yet to see fully accomplished. That's what this has been all about. And God has been wooing the heart. He's been showing signs and wonders from some unusual people. His heart for you is that you would come into agreement and say, if God can do that there, then he can do it with me too. Why is that? It's because favor is on your life. Favor is on your life. It is a shield wrapped around you. Amen. I just read that from the scripture. Amen. Are you with me? Everybody say, I'm taking that. Because it's on me for a lifetime. In the name of Jesus. I just love that. I could just go on. I would love to go on. <laughs> Because we see the same picture all the way through the scripture. Are you with me? Yeah. Come on now. <clears throat> so in the midst of that, I love this word favor. It took six weeks for blessing to penetrate my thick head. Do you all have a thick head too? <laughs> Come on now. We're lovers of God full of the Holy Spirit, are we not? Yeah. Now listen, precious ones. I need you to hear this. A few months ago, at the, just recently, not too long ago, I had a dream. Would you like to hear the dream? Yeah. I know this house has dreamers in it, but I'm not a dreamer. That's not typically how God speaks to me. However, this particular moment was so powerful that I woke up and instantly I have every detail of it. So I want to share some of that with you, if that's okay. All right, so I'm, I'm not sure if I'm half awake or half asleep. You know those kind of dreams. I know I was asleep, but it felt like I was awake. That's what it felt like in the dream. And while I'm in the dream, <coughs> we are in a vast group of people, a vast group. It feels as though there is a mist over this group. So you, it's, not, it's not easy to see all the faces but you feel the energy of the presence. Are you with me, precious ones? There's a vast group here, and there's a wonder that's going on in the dream, in worship, that is a worship where you almost don't know how to open your mouth and, 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 and just participate. You know that? It's like a holy wonder. That's what it felt like in the dream. And in the midst of that, something begins to happen. It's almost, a, the only way I can describe it, it feels like the heavens open. It feels like we're under something that is about to be released in the dream. And as I'm in that, it feels like I'm watching like a tornado funnel come down. Now that catches my attention because I'm from Canada. We don't have those kind of things. I know you all have that down here a little bit. Is that true? Well, we, we, that's, not, that's very unusual for anything like that to happen in Canada. So this has got my attention because I'm thinking, well, that's very unusual. In the dream, I'm thinking this. In the midst of this beautiful, sweet presence, and as this thing seems to be pouring down, it begins to release from the bottom of it. It's like something just exploded out of the, out of the bottom of it. And there was a freshness of the power that could only be described as heaven that was flowing from that. It was so profound in the dream that I'm now wide awake. And I'm encountering this while I'm on my bed and I'm like, uh, 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 
like, you know, like, what do you do with a moment like that? Are you with me? Why is it that God chooses moments like that? Are you with me? Everybody say, I'm with you, Donna. <laughs> because he chooses unusual moments to do very unusual things. Are you with me? And I felt like God really spoke to me that we're going into a season of an increase of power. An increase of the energy, the divine energy of heaven. I hope you don't mind me using that word because that is what the Holy Spirit does. He's, he's, he's the creative energizer of the, of the heart of the Father. Is that true? Releasing the divine will of heaven. Come on now. And so this is happening in the dream. And I'm sitting there and I'm, I, I'm saying, you know, in moments like that, all you want to do is just soak somewhere. Because it was so incredible. And then something else happened not long after that. Very, very close. I get a call from Pastor John. Beautiful, sweet brother John. I love him. And he says, he says to me, <clears throat> we have a wonderful brother coming to our church. Do you remember this, Pastor John? <laughs> and he says, uh, why don't you come? And I'm thinking, oh, why do I need to come? Do you remember I said, why do I need to come? I meet all kinds of people all the time. And this is, a, I don't know this brother. He's from another nation. Wonderful man of God. And so I, I said to John, because we have relationship, yes, I, I, I'll come. I'll come. And so we went, and it was wonderful. It was an empowered message. And I love what this dear brother, Jonathan, said this. Signs and wonders will follow the preaching of the word. You know something? We need to hear that. It has to be about the word. And out of that, God is going to flow. And so at the end, he's praying for people as we typically do. Is that true? So Pastor John says to me, let's go and have some prayer. So I'm saying, well, he's praying for something that's really not, not applicable. And so the prayer continues, and then Pastor John, you know, he's rather relentless. <laughs> this time he takes me by the arm. Do you remember that, Pastor John? <laughs> and he says, we're going for some prayer. Are you with me? And in that moment, watch what happens. Uh, uh, Reed, can I take your hand? This is exactly what happened. Pastor John, Pastor Victoria were there when this happened. And so we take a hand like this. That's all we did. That's all that happened. I've never met this person before. But in that connection, there was such a divine flow of the Holy Spirit. Ask John what happened. Because it threw me backwards on the floor. Wow. I'm not kidding. What's happening there... Come on, uh, Ashley, let me take your hand. It's like we are connecting and there's a flow of power because we're both in the same realm. That's what happened in that moment. It was such an incredible moment. And I, I tell you, it was like the whole church just went crazy for a few minutes. <laughs> now, what's happening there is I'm actually encountering in the natural what just happened in a dream. That's what's happening. That's why I'm telling you the story. Because I feel there's something here about those of us, we are used to living in Pentecost. Are you with me? These are not new words, but I need to tell you they need to be fresh. Because favor is on, your life, on you for a lifetime. And so what happens is this brother is prophesying. I want to tell you I'm in another realm. I don't even hear what he's saying. Are you hearing me? All I know is that it was real. My feet are up in the air like some kind of a crazy person. I don't know how long I was down on the floor, but it was a long time, wasn't it, Pastor John? It was such a powerful encounter, precious ones, that God just, this is just recent. This is not very long ago. And I'm sitting there totally unexpecting that God wants to move with anointing like that. And I felt like God was saying, much like what we read in chapter 4 of Acts, as the disciples continue on, everywhere you went, you, feet, you hear of this divine fall of the Holy Spirit, and they were all filled afresh. Are you with me? I feel we're in that moment right now. 
I feel this is a moment where you need to be walking out of winter camp knowing that the fire of God is blazing inside of you. Are you with me? That was a really powerful moment, one that I was not expecting, one that I've encountered in different ways in years gone by. But I felt like what the Lord is saying is it needs to be fresh right now. It's always fresh. Everywhere we go, we're totally filled up again. Totally filled up again. Everybody say amen. amen. And I, that moment just did something on the inside of me because all of a sudden I'm realizing that in the midst of being a carrier of the kingdom of heaven, we need the energy of the kingdom of heaven. Amen? That's what's on my heart tonight. I'm sharing with you out of a little bit of personal experience stuff. But in reality, it's exactly what God is doing. You've encountered so many wonderful things in the last two weeks. What are you walking out of here with? The fullness of the Holy Spirit. This is a fullness hour. Everybody say fullness. fullness. We're not accepting anything less than fullness in this now time of a revival generation. Yes. In the name of Jesus. Yes. Everybody say, I'm taking that. So when that happened in Pastor John's church, do you know that I was soaking in that for about four days? That didn't live for about four days. It was so phenomenal. And I felt like the Lord says, I need you to know that you are fully ready, fully fired, and fully released for the next season. Are you with me? We need the divine energy of heaven. We are going to be like the priests in the temple who were there always keeping the fire burning in the temple. Is that not true? Okay, that's exactly where we need to be, precious ones. Exactly in that place. Why is that? It's because there's so much coming at us trying to put that fire out. We throw disappointment on it. We throw the, the waters of the toughness of life on the, on, the, on, the, on, the, on the fires. And God is saying, you are a priest and a king in the heavenly place. I need you acting like that. Yes. Is that all okay to say that? That's how we want to pray. Is that okay, Dr. Russ? He says, okay, we're tag teaming, so I don't know what he's going to do with that. You're going to close. All right, so is it okay if we pray? I want to pray that, all right? So that means, how do you want to do that? I want to pray a favor that is unending. I want to pray a favor upon favor upon favor. Is that okay to do that? Are you sure? Okay. And then we're going to just see where God takes us after that. Because I hear the Lord saying, you must, must, must increase. Your capacity must increase to possess what it is that I'm doing in this next season. Is that okay for me to say that? Okay, that's called a nugget going straight into your spirit. So I want to pray. That means we have to stand. Is that okay? Come on now. I just love that, don't you? Everybody say, I'm taking that. Come on now. So here's what I want you to do while we're praying, because this has been a restoration time. I want you to pick one thing <clears throat> that you would like God to deal with in the next few days. Just one thing. Can you do that? Okay. And then together, we're going to go after it with God. How about that? In the name of Jesus. Because we all have something that's on our heart. Everybody say, we all have something that's on our heart. If it's going to be a sin, we're going to see it. We're going to, we're going to kill that sin. How about that? Come on, the blood of Jesus is like acid on sin. Hey, yo. Come on now. We're going to stand with him in his goodness and release some favor. How about that? Come on. Everybody say, I've taken that. Hallelujah. All right, let's raise our hands. Okay, here's what I'd like you to, to do. Say, I'm taking favor. I'm taking it's favor upon favor. It's, favor it's favor. gift upon gift. It's, upon it's gift. grace upon grace. grace upon and I'm, I'm drinking in the spirit of favor, spirit of favor. For, a for a fresh moment. I'm taking favor right now. I'm, I'm going to teach you how to overcome in favor. I'm taking favor right now. I'm going to teach you how to overcome in the fullness of my goodness as the Lord. I'm taking favor right now. I'm taking a fresh drink of favor right now. Because the rivers of the water are flowing and favor is in your midst. 
I'm taking favor right now in the name of Jesus. I release a blessing of the Lord. I release the favor of the Lord right now in the name of Jesus. Here, I need you to hear this. When you think we've gotten to the end of being favored, I hear the Lord say, I'm going to go back and keep on going because I've barely begun. Yes. You are in a season right now where you have barely, barely begun yes. in the name of Jesus. Why is that? It's because I'm increasing favor upon your life. I'm increasing favor in the place of Naoth in the name of Jesus. I'm going to teach you how to inhabit in the place of favor, says the Lord. That means we're going to live in that place. Everybody say, I'm taking that. that. Turn to the person beside you and say, take the favor. favor. Come on, take the favor. Take the favor. We're going to live in favor. Well, yo, it's okay. It's all right. Just take it. We're going to take more favor. Take more favor. Take a release of it. Take the depth of it. Take the essence of it. Take the fullness of it in the name of Jesus. Speak into your life and say, I'm, a, I'm walking in the favor of God. I'm walking in the favor of God. It doesn't matter the circumstances. I'm going to teach you how to live, how to inhabit in the place of favor. Take the favor in the name of Jesus. Just take it. Take more. Dana, take more favor in the name of Jesus. You need it for the next season in the name of Jesus. Why is that? It's because God is in the house. And when he says favor is on you for a lifetime, he means favor is on you. Favor is on you for a lifetime in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Favor is on you for a lifetime. Brother, come on, take it. Take the favor in the name of Jesus. It's on you for a lifetime. Come on, come on. Favor, favor, favor is on you for a lifetime in the name of Jesus. Favor, 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 favor is on you. The favor of heaven, it's on you. Favor, it's on you. In the, oh, yo, show. Come on, come on. Take more, take it, take it. It's all over you. Favor, favor, favor. Just take a big breath. Take a big drink. Turn to the person beside you and say, take it. Take the favor. Big, big, big favor. I'm going to teach you how to soak in that place, says the Lord. Are you taking it? Take the favor. Come on, precious one. Let me give you a big hug. Because favor is on your life. And we need you strong and full, energized by the power of God. Everybody say, I'm taking that. Are you taking it? He says, <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh boy. You know, come on. <laughs> you need more for this next season. Come on. Are you taking it? I am. She says, I'm taking it. Well, take it. Oh, come on. <laughs> Oh my gosh. I'm just believing in the come on, you gotta take more. Come on. Just stay soaking it. County, favor, fullness, 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 fullness of favor. Why is it? Because the fire of God is in our midst. It's right there. Just take it. Hallelujah. Dana, turn to the person beside you. Gotta give it away. Come on, give it away. Give it away. <laughs> oh, they're already gone. Come on. There you go. That's for you too. On your life. On your family. In the name of Jesus. It burns right through you and takes you into a deeper place in the spirit. Come on. Right here. More favor. More favor. More favor on you in the name of Jesus. Everybody say we're taking more. We're taking more. Are you taking it? Yes. You're taking <laughs> oh. She says, I've taken that too. I've taken. Why is that? You're taking it too. Well, I. <laughs> you guys are so fun. Come on. Why is that? Reed, are you taking more? Uh, she took mine. Ah, she took <laughs> of such joy. I don't know why. I'm just seeing you just rolling in joy. I just see such a divine energy on you, Reed. I don't know why. I just see it. I just see you like a little boy and you are 
just full of joy, full of laughter. I see you looking at things that need to be done that look crazy impossible. And in the midst of that, you're sitting there laughing in the name of Jesus. I just sense the Holy Spirit in freshness of joy in the name of Jesus. <laughs> But I just see something all over him. He's a crazy boy. <laughs> it's favor upon favor upon favor. In the name of Jesus. I'm going to teach you, says the Lord, how to think favor. How to move in favor. How to speak in favor. How to release in favor. In the name of Jesus. On days of opposition... Favor is going to carry you through in the name of Jesus. But I hear the Lord saying, I need your intentional focus. Everybody say, God has my focus. Favor, 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 favor. Goes right deep, right down here where you can feel the rolling of the river in the name of Jesus. Come on, you're taking more. You're taking more. Everybody say, I'm taking more. In the name of Jesus. Come on. Can I pray for you? Is that okay? You don't mind. Can I give you a kiss too? I don't. Ah, favor. Favor in the name of Jesus. I'm just blessing you with a freshness. Fresh, 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 fresh. I just hear the word fresh all over you. In the name of Jesus. Fresh touch, fresh touch, fresh anointing, fresh power, fresh fire in the name of Jesus. It's fresh. <laughs> Are you taking fresh? <laughs> in the name of Jesus. Are you taking it? Yes. Take, take more favor because you need it in the name of Jesus. Come on. From the top of your head to the bottom of your feet, you are going to be just rolling in the place of divine favor in the name of Jesus. Everybody say, I'm taking more, I'm taking more. I'm taking more in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. All right, I need to hear a big shout to Jesus. Come on. Wonderful Jesus. Hallelujah. Come on. Amen. I pray that when you get up in the morning, that same shout is there. Why is that? Because we want to embrace the moment yes. and fully live the moment yes. full of the Holy Spirit yes. in the name of Jesus. Yes. How about that? So that we're going to live like real priests knowing that that fire is not going out. Yes. Everybody say amen. amen. We need that fire for the season we're walking into in the name of Jesus. All right, come on, turn to the person beside you once again. Come on, we're family. We're like Ruth. Just love that person. Tell them there's big favor all over you. Come on, you can pray for me too. Big favor. Everybody say big favor. I feel like I'm hearing the Lord say, <laughs> before you even get into tomorrow, the favor's already flowing. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. So the shout is a shout knowing that before we even get to, more, to tomorrow, it's already flowing. Okay. You have all that you need for life and for godliness in the spirit. So we fully pull and draw your spirit to attention to flow in what God is releasing through the days of this camp. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Come on, we're not finished yet. We're not finished. <laughs> come on, Dr. Ross. Come on. Glory to God. Let's get down a great big hand. Glory to God. What an incredible winter camp, 2023. Yes. You know, we've been, how many of you have been absolutely blessed? Just what an incredible time. And 
You know, all I really want to see is the Spirit of the Lord do what only He can do in our lives. And, you know, tonight, as many of you know, probably one of the most influential people in my life that have really had an impact on me, both in prayer and a relationship, uh, a mother in the Spirit, and someone that so many years blessed me and came and visit us in Canada and all that. Let's give Lila Tulloon a wonderful hand. <laughs> Sister Lila, one of the most impactful prayer warriors this city has ever seen, raised up an army of prayer warriors. Let's give her a great big hand. What a wonderful pioneer in the spirit that so many of us caught the anointing and chasing God ever since. That's something special in her. We're just... You know what, the best is yet to come. You know, the legacy that she left in this city and in so many of our hearts, that fire will never go out. I tell you, I had some great times at Brownsville and in, 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 in the revival meetings, but the most powerful experiences I had in the spirit were in the back room in the intercessory prayer room where the spirit of God did what only he could do. We're blessed to have her here with us tonight, and we're blessed to have... Sister Donna here with us and all the wonderful things that have gone on this week. It's just been an awesome time. So many testimonies have been coming in. Tomorrow morning, we're going to get blessed. Pastor John, Pastor Victoria will be here. Going to be a wonderful time in the spirit for us. And, you know, God's doing some amazing and wonderful things. And he's preparing us for what lies ahead. Let's just lift our hearts to the Lord and let him just seal all the blessings of the week in our heart. Father, we thank you. We thank you for this wonderful week. We thank you for all the great testimonies. But most of all, we thank you for your power and your presence. And Father, we ask you to seal in our hearts every one of us that were here and everyone that watched online, that you would seal that blessing in our hearts. And let that fresh fire burn inside of us, that fire that will never go out. I ask that your hand of blessing and your hand of favor rest upon your people. Wherever they go and whatever they do, let the love and the light of the Lord shine to them and through them. In Jesus' glorious name, amen. It's been so wonderful to be able to host what God's doing and to see so many of you get blessed. If you have a home church, you go to your home church tomorrow. But if you don't, you're welcome to be here with us and visit with us tomorrow morning at 10 o'clock. We're going to have a glorious time. We're going to, uh, tomorrow is going to be a communion service and we're going to have a prayer tunnel and close out everything on our people. So you just come on out tomorrow if you're here and you're available. If you're online, join us again tomorrow online. God bless you now. You have a great night. Make sure you greet somebody on the way out. God bless you. Hello, hello, hello. Wasn't that powerful? Hello, everyone. So glad you were able to join us for this uh, winter camp. It was, uh, hasn't it been amazing? It's been an incredible, incredible winter camp. And, um, and uh, uh, you can now actually watch all of our services on Eagle Worldwide Ministries YouTube channel. So just tune in. You can get all the services on Eagle Worldwide, or you can have it on Russ and May, but you can just go back and listen to that. So you can also join us uh, tomorrow morning at 10 a.m. Uh, if you don't have a, a home church, you can check us live tomorrow morning at the Dwelling Places site. 
And so we're going to pray for some of you right now. Like for those of you that are watching, we just want to bless you. Praise God. Praise God. We just want to thank everyone that's watching from Canada right now. We know we have lots of people up there in our church and in, in, uh, in Hamilton, Toronto, Aurelia, uh, in Quebec and out west. We just want to pray a blessing over Canada right now. We ask, oh God, winter camp would, would just, we just throw that blessing up to Canada. We throw it up to Canada. Favor, as, as Donna was speaking, the favor of God be upon you. Each and every one of you that is online that has watched today and throughout this winter camp, we want to bless you. In Jesus' name, hallelujah. Go yes. praise We want God. to pray for Victoria's daughter. Uh, she's having a procedure on Tuesday. Father, we just want to lift up this procedure on Tuesday for Victoria's daughter. Father, we ask, oh God, that your hand will guide the hand of the surgeon. Give wisdom to the doctors, Lord. And we just want to declare that this surgery will be successful, Father. And uh, and whatever needs to be dealt with will be dealt with, oh God. That uh, it will be, uh, it, it will be, Father God, just this entire procedure covered with the blood of Jesus Christ. So, Lord, we just declare a successful surgery in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So, do not forget, tomorrow morning, Victoria and I will be here, Pensacola time at 10 o'clock in the morning. Also, at the gathering place on Monday night, we have Ellen Campbell going to be speaking. So, join us up there. Uh, we are so blessed to be down here. Uh, with Russ and May. Let's just throw up a blessing to Russ and May. Father, I just pray for Russ and May right now, Dr. Russ, Pastor Maeve, and everybody at the dwelling place that helped, helped to host this phenomenal week, Lord. We just pray your blessings upon Eagle Worldwide Ministries, all the churches, all the missionaries in Shauna and others in different parts of the world, Lord. We just pray a blessing upon all the ministers and all the pastors, all the evangelists, all the prophets, Father, uh, teachers, Lord, in Eagle Worldwide Ministry, all the people, elders, deacons, and all of our churches, oh God. We just ask, oh God, that you would bless them. I pray that the, the power of God would hit every church in Eagle Worldwide Ministries tomorrow. Eagle Worldwide Ministry Churches tomorrow. And I won't name them all because I might miss one and somebody would be upset. So we'll just say, everyone, be blessed tomorrow as you go to church. Take this fire. Again, catch the favor of God. Catch the favor yes, of God. Amen. Catch the blessings yes. of God. Be Unstoppable blessings. Yes, amen. Full of glory. Every Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Shanda bada yes, we want to pray for Robert. Uh, Lord, we pray for your grace, O oh God. Lord, uh, as, uh, as he, uh, Lord Jesus, struggles with this addiction, Father, we pray, O oh God, that you will give him the grace, Lord. Father, I pray, Lord, that you would just surround him, O oh God. Lord Jesus, and, and that he would have victory over this addiction in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. So many of you are online, you're saying, I'm catching that, I'm catching that. This thing is contagious. All right, not only can you catch a flu bug, all right, a sickness, all right, you don't have to catch that, you can catch a blessing from God, the favor of God is flowing, expect God to do something big in your life, amen, because we are pumped for what God is going to do yes. this year in 2023. Amen. Yes, amen. We have a great big God, so let's expect great things in 2023. Amen. God bless you. Thank you for joining us for winter camp. And summer camp will be coming up in, in August. We'll give you more information about that. And so you don't want to miss that. So join the, uh, the dwelling place, the online church with Eagle Worldwide Ministries. And come uh, to one of our churches if you can tomorrow. Uh, and God bless you, and we're just signing off here for Winter Camp 2023. Revive, refresh, and, and restore. restore. God bless, God bless you. you. Have a great 2023. Look forward to seeing you all at summer camp.